Hey, welcome to BeerAmerica.tv. We're at Rohrbach Brewery in Rochester, New York, talking with owner John Erlob. I started Rohrbach's, uh, actually the corporation was started in 1991. We opened our first brewery and pub in 92 in the German house, a little community of the South Wedge in uh, Rochester. I, I uh, was very proud of the fact that I lived in Southern California for a couple of years and I loved it. And uh, I go back there now and that's like the hotbed of all the craft beers and the microbreweries and the pubs. But I lived there in the early 80s and there was nothing. My very first kind of craft beer that I tried was Anchor Steam. Went up to San Francisco and I loved it. And it's such a great company and you know, that, that kind of, I guess, planted the first seed. But honestly, the very first brew pub I was in, I was transferred from uh, Southern California to New York City. And the Manhattan Brewery was just a little south of the village, and I, that was, I, I just thought that was the greatest thing in the world. And then from there, I got transferred to Germany, where I, I, you know, I still think they make the best beers in the world, and I love that. And, the, and uh, I was working for a large corporation at the time, and I knew that's not what I wanted to do. So between my, my sample of Anchor Steam and the Manhattan Brewery visit, and then two years in Germany, I knew that that's what I wanted to do. The industry has changed in a lot of ways, you know, from the 80s, certainly, um, I, I think one of the things that I notice the most is that the quality of almost all of the craft beers that I try is really excellent. Honestly, in the early days, there were a lot of us just trying to do the best we could, not really knowing how to make good beer. And that was a shame because a lot of people were trying their craft beers for the very first time, and not all the beers were as clean as they should be. Now, every beer I try might not be the style I like, and, and customers will say that. I, we actually make things at Roarbox, which wouldn't be my beer of choice but I know they're clean, I know they're good, I know lots of people do like it. We all have different tastes, and that's the beauty of the craft industry. Um, we still, though, one of the things that hasn't changed too much is we still have a very per small percentage of the market. Uh, it's 5% or less. It is growing, and every year it's growing, especially the past four or five years, we've had double-digit growth, which is exciting. And people continue to enjoy craft beer and, and get exposed to it, and new, you know, younger folks that are just starting to, to enjoy adult beverages enjoy craft beer. They're not drinking maybe as much, but they want quality. And, and I think also, the, as people enjoy food and beverage, you know, it isn't just if you're going to have a quality dinner that you grab a nice glass of wine, which is fine. I do that many times. But I think beer goes great with food, but not any beer. You've got to have a flavorful beer that stands up to the food that you're eating. And that tends to, to get you in the direction of a flavorful craft beer, which is also great, I think. Just earlier this year, I, I was in Ireland for a week, and I love Guinness and Beamish, and I love the stouts, but you go to each pub, and it's pretty much Guinness and Beamish, and, and again, it's, it's wonderful, but you don't have that variety. I was anxious to get back to the States because I, I like a lot of different style beers, and I love to go to the little towns, and everybody now in the United States has their own small brewery, and you can sample what they're making. And, you know, a lot of times you can visit the brewery or talk to the brewers. It's kind of a, it's something that's unique to the United States. And while the quality of the European beers are fantastic, they don't have the variety we have. We have something very unique here in America. I, I have to tell you that probably our flagship beer from the beginning has been our Highland Lager. And that was something that we designed. It was a lager. A lot of microbreweries don't do lagers. It takes quite a bit longer, and it's kind of a tricky uh, beer to do. But we felt because 95% of the market, or at the time probably 98% of the market, were used to domestic beers, we wanted to make something that was true to our style. Two-row malted barley, hops, water, yeast. You know, we file all the German purity laws. But we wanted it to not be too hoppy or too heavy. So the, the, the Budweiser drinker that tries it for the very first time can say, man, now I can drink that beer. And, you know, call it a crossover product or whatever. Again, it's true to our style, but it's a wonderful, uh, easy-to-drink beer that has done really well for us. Um, probably our next, or, or maybe even it has surpassed it at this point, is a Scotch Ale, which is a very malty, flavorful beer, wonderful with like a steak or heavier foods or sauces. That Scotch Ale at this point is our best seller. And that is a true traditional Scotch Ale style. Um, not too hoppy, just well balanced, but real malty and nice. Scotch Ale is not a uh, very widely made style of beer, unfortunately, um, but it has a very big following here in Rochester. Um, for years, it was our second biggest selling beer, and just the last year or so, it's, it's overtaken and, and become our biggest selling beer. Um, Scotch is a, a great beer. It's very flexible with food. Um, it finishes on the sweeter side. Very little hop character to it. Um, there's a big extreme, uh, beer, ex 
extreme beer or extreme brewing movement in craft beer right now, and a big part of that is large, hoppy beers. Uh, those are fantastic. Um, but this is kind of on the other side. It's a little higher in alcohol. It's close to 7%. It's got a very smooth drinkability to it because there's, there's very little uh, uh, hop bitterness or, or uh, hop character to it. You know, for us, craft or micro means small, but quality is what it's all about. So we try to use the very best ingredients, the freshest hops that we can. And, and there's no limit as to what we can do. We've done rye beers, and we'll probably do 30 different beers. And you know, a major brewer just can't do that and produce it. We don't have to necessarily come up with labeling and distribution and all the rest. All we do is make it. Um, you, you know, we have some regulations that we take care of as far as the state and the feds are concerned, and then we put it on tap. It's a very simple thing for us to do. We can be very, um, very dynamic in changing and come up with new styles all the time. You know, honestly, the the thought of being a small local microbrewery, um, there, there's two key words there, small and local. It will probably be always small and local. We, we certainly want to grow. Uh, we want more people in Rochester. It's our main market. We look to upstate Buffalo, Syracuse to grow a little bit. But we don't want to distribute too far because then, then we kind of lose that small and local feel. And just this year, we opened this standalone brewery. Uh, we'll probably do 3,000 barrels this year. Uh, there's another local company, great local brewery, High Falls. I think they do 1,000 barrel batches. So they can, you know, especially if they double brew, they can probably do what we do in a day. It takes us all year, so we are still pretty small. But we would like to continue to, uh, to grow. We're starting to package some products because we want to make sure that people can come into the pub, come into your local uh, pub or tavern and enjoy a Rohrbach beer. But if you really want to enjoy it at home with some great food, you should be able to get some beer at the package store. So we're just starting to get into that. One of the other things happened in New York State, and I do think that there is, as you go around the country, different acceptance of craft beers. And, and I'll tell you, I think New York State is, is uh, maybe not the Pacific Northwest, which is, you know, just does so, so well. Uh, but we're coming a long way, and recently we formed a guild, the New York State Brewers Association, and uh, it's great. I mean, we're, we've uh, accomplished a lot of things. We actually got legislation passed, which specifically uh, says that our industry is important to the state. Uh, there's a beer trail now in New York State. We've got 60 breweries strong and growing. Um, we, uh, the, the Brewers Association sponsors some of the bigger festivals to try to get as many breweries there as possible. Uh, those breweries that are sponsored or sanctioned give back to the association, which gives us some uh, legislative uh, power to try to work with our legislators to continue to support our industry. So it's pretty exciting. Uh, they, uh, in the very few years that we've been here, we're almost one of the uh, organizations that other states look to as to how to run a guild and how to do it. So we're really proud of that, and I'm proud to be part of that organization. I, I, I'm from Rochester, and I have a tremendous amount of pride in this city and in this state. Actually, New York State is, is very unique in a lot of ways. People from outside of the state think of New York City, and that's it. Upstate New York is a wonderful place to live and to grow, and we have lots of agriculture. And more and more, we want people to take pride in what's made and grown in New York State, and more importantly, in Rochester, New York. And Rohrbox is, is that, and that's why we're real happy to not only be here, but be here in the city. Cheers.